how is everybody? How are you all doing? Look at this glorious sunshine. It's not even February yet, not quite. Brighter days are definitely coming. And we've got a bright day today. Because today, oh yes, we're going river hunting. <laughs> my favorite thing. I think this is now my favorite thing in the world. Tracing and tracking a subterranean river, a buried river, a secret stream. And that is what we're doing today here in Upper Walthamstow, right on the edge of Epping Forest. So I received a, a curious communication via Instagram from a lady who said her mother had gone out to see that Thames Water were doing some work in front of her flats up here in Upper Walthamstow, Biston Avenue, and that through the manhole cover she could see running water that the, that the people from Thames Water told her was an underground river, a buried stream. They really know their stuff, Thames Water, when it comes to water. The thing about that is, when I first came to look for the Phillybrook, Leighton Stone's Lost River, and there is a video down here on my channel where you can watch that video, when I was doing my research at the Vestry House, I was got a bit confused between the idea of whether the Phillybrook rose above here, above Wall, uh, Wood Street, there was a, a newspaper article which suggested that, but all the other documentation said it rose back sort of near Whips Cross Hospital, near the end of James Lane. But we did come up here initially, we came up to the top of Wood Street, to this high ground here in Upper Walthamstow, and we met a man who said he had a buried river running down behind his house. And at the time we just thought, well, this is a bit of a wild goose chase, we don't know what that is. But it's always niggled at me that there's a lost river in Walthamstow, an unacknowledged lost river. And I've always wanted to find it. And that underground lost river of Walthamstow is what we're finding today. We're going to go and find that river and we're going to follow it. We're going to track it. We're going to trace it. We're going to hunt it through the streets of Walthamstow. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. I really love the architecture of this place here. Hainault Court. It's got a, a vague feeling of 1930s sort of crime writers, doesn't it? You can also imagine seances taking place in a flat in Hainault Court. Going uh, hunting for a secret buried subterranean river on the result of a tip-off does have a bit of a feel of ghost hunting about it, isn't it? These rivers are like ghosts in the landscape that we've attempted to suppress, but their spirits insist on breaking free and speaking to us. So we're just going to go along here, along Forest Rise, which has a part to play in our story. So when I did those initial Phillybrook investigations with my old pal Nick Papadimitrio, this is where we ended up here, on this little bit of open land, sort of a, a remnant of Epping Forest, cut off from the main part of the forest here. And we concluded that this was probably where the Buried River rose. The source of the Phillybrook actually is further away, the principal source of the Phillybrook, I should say. But Nick seemed to declare that this was a watershed. Perhaps he was right. This is a watershed up here. Thames water van there, got to be a sign. So the other night, I kind of spontaneously came up here after picking up a, like a computer mouse from Argos. There you go, it's my life. And I thought, oh, I'll just go and have a look at Biston Avenue. And I ended up following a potential course for the stream, very speculatively. 
By the time I got home, I was absolutely buzzing. I didn't come down for a few days. My wife was like, wow, something's really got into you. And I'm like, yeah, it's this buried river. Perhaps its deity had taken possession of me. <laughs> and then I went looking around online, because if you look for Lost Rivers, Walthamstow, Buried Rivers, Walthamstow on the internet, you won't find anything, or I certainly didn't. However, I think I found our stream. And there are two maps, only two, that I found that seem to suggest its course. So this one here was sent to me by somebody on, on Twitter. And you can see we're up at Walthamstow here. And this blue line here, I think, is our stream. I actually don't know the name of this map. And this, uh, the course has been drawn on. And then we have this map here from 1840. And there it shows the course of the river. And it shows it in relation to Wood Street and Schoenhall Street and Forest House. And you can see on this map, it has marked the river as the Filly Brook. It's given it a name. Although this name most likely only refers to the Leytonstone and Leyton sections of the river, as we'll discover later in our walk. For now, our buried river remains unnamed. Look at this for a street name. If this doesn't promise great things, I don't know what does. You can see how much water is lying around here. And through there, the path leads into the forest. And along there is a pond that I wondered whether it might be the source of this underground stream but I don't think it is. Even so it is another indicator of how much water there is on this high ground here. So here's the thing, both the documents that I have and those two maps, they show the river as rising just back there really, just off the greenway near the cricket pitch or near Wood Street Station in the written document. But I can't ignore the fact <laughs> that someone has literally seen the, the stream running beneath the ground up here at Biston Avenue. So I can only conclude that this is another source for the stream and that they gather down at the bottom of the hill there just on the other side of Wood Street. That's what I think. Even though we've got these <laughs> maps, they're not, you know, fantastically easy to, to follow unless you get on the ground. And we're going to have to get down the ground here and read the lie of the land. That's why I love this. It was very apt to have St Peter's in the forest here. This church in the forest near the source of an underground river. And looking down there across the rooftops of Walthamstow, you can see how high up we are here, right on the edge of the forest. So we're going to turn off Upper Walthamstow Road into Biston Avenue, potential source of our buried stream. These streets here on the forest slopes are some of the, the latter fields to be uh, cleared, to be disafforested, to have their forest rights taken away and to be developed. So in some of the books that I'm reading, like Village London, written in the 1880s, portions of this were still fields that have been covered, that have been kind of cleared for pasture. And when people were looking at these field systems then, in the 1880s, in some cases they were drawing from memories of looking at a landscape that would have been very similar to the medieval landscape, to the old medieval manor of Walthamstow Tony. They could certainly have more easily summoned up a vision of the Saxon settlement and then the Norman takeover and the, and the establishment of those medieval manors here. So 
So this is the uh, the high point in Biston Avenue and we're looking down where presumably the stream that that lady observed is flowing beneath the streets here. And there is this triangle of, of green space here of these trees which could be where the water rises. You can see in here people have made votive offerings to the river gods. Everyone knows the river gods love a can of tisky or two. So our river is running beneath the street somewhere here, rising at the top of this hill and flowing down beneath this street. I think it may be running down the front of this block of flats here. Some uh, Thames water works here. Let's hold our breaths. What will we see? Uh, nothing really. But this must be uh, part of the works that the lady saw where the river revealed itself. I'm thinking we shouldn't really read too much into this water trickling down the gutter here because there's been an awful lot of rain recently including this morning, it was absolutely tipping it down. So it looks like this, uh, this manhole cover is just blocked up. On the other hand though, it might actually be our stream. Further down along the course of the Phillybrook, you can actually hear the river in certain places beneath the, uh, beneath the street irons. I will put that footage in at the end of this video. I don't want to jump to the end. That would be foolish, right? So you can, you know, you can read stuff into these manhole covers. I think if you remember when we did the River Fleet walk as well, there's points where you can hear the glorious River Fleet gurgling deep beneath the streets. And you can even see it actually through the street irons. Obviously it's hard to know for sure where the river flows from this point. It could take a meander here to the left, but I'd say that unusually large gap between those houses in that terrace there is a little bit of an indicator of a buried river. We don't tend to build on top of buried rivers. We certainly didn't in the past anyway, so why would they leave such a large gap there? Look, if you look along this terrace, you don't see a gap like that anywhere else along here. So in order to get to the other side of that gap, we've got to go in a really big loop around this road to the left, all the way around this street and then around onto Wood Street. Many of London's urban rivers and their tributaries were forced underground as London boomed and exploded with the railway development. And they then essentially became sewers. But the rivers would not be tamed. And they would often break through the ground, causing a lot of problem. Even to this day, actually, a lot of the submerged rivers still flood, like the River Fleet, as we saw, near Andy Sandwich Bar in Kentish Town, for example. The Falcon Brook, down in southwest London, is known to blow out the street irons after heavy rain. And likewise, this river here, caused endless disruption right through until the 1980s when Waltham Forest Council finally came up with an idea to bury a series of tanks along its course that would take up the excess rainwater and then funnel it into the pipes. And the pipes are really quite substantial. There's a photograph in a newspaper article from 1994 that I found in the wonderful Vestry House Museum, sadly not accessible at the moment. So that gives us an indicator part of the course of the stream where they laid those pipes which were slightly further along its course but so from here it's a little bit of conjecture and guesswork we're reading the lie of the land but off the end of this street here brings us near to the point where the man reported a ditch or a river behind his house so I'll go and have a look at that to line it up with our stream here
So I'm pretty sure this is the track that I came up just over 10 years ago with Nick Papadimitro when we were looking for the source of the Philly Brook. We were just following a hunch really that this looked like a, a likely point for the river to rise. And that does align with the map that I have where it kind of rises on the far side of the cricket pitch, comes across the cricket pitch and runs down this lane here and then continues down there and crosses over Wood Street and then flows towards Leytonstone. We, we know there's an underground stream because I had a tree pulled up and there's all water running under here. Do you know the name of it? No. The stream. Now it's I've got an old map but I think it's 1944 before these no, 1914, sorry, before these houses were built. And this was just a plot of bare land with the, the cricket ground has been here since 1862. Wow. <laughs> but we. I think that's the uh, source of the Philibrook we found there, or at least one source. <laughs> is a major revelation. <laughs> Finally connecting the maps showing a watercourse with this little pocket here where we came 10 years ago, just over 10 years ago, and concluded it was just a bit of a wild goose chase. It still may be. I mean, this is not completely confirmed, but I'm not going to ignore the solid evidence of the Thames water workman identifying a buried stream running down from Biston Avenue. And I followed the course of the night, and I think, I think I've got an idea of where it runs. And so it'd be really good to, for you to come on this journey with me today, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. People sometimes say, well, surely you can get the maps from Thames Water. Well, no, they're not publicly accessible as far as I'm aware, but if you are someone who has got access to those maps and is able to share them, I would love to see them. <laughs> They must exist, but you can imagine really, maps of water mains are considered quite sensitive information. You know, they're part of the, the vital infrastructure of the city, so they don't really tend to go sharing that stuff willy-nilly, but that would confirm the actual course. But I think I know where we need to go, so come with me here, down Wood Street, and then we've got more mysteries to unravel. So more mysteries to unravel, and great stories to tell. Wood Street Station, which is known as being close to the source of the river and on its course. You can see we're in the low point of the road here at Wood Street. So that branch of the buried stream could cross Wood Street here and go through this little industrial estate here. You've got builders yards and a, and a garden centre etc. You can see it's open on the other side to where I'm pretty sure the river runs, or I'm, well, I'm pretty certain it runs parallel to Wood Street. Here we are in the bigger scheme of things. Upper Walthamstow here, we've got Epping Forest here, we've got the Hollow Ponds and Whips Cross Hospital here, Walthamstow Village and the main bit of Walthamstow, the High Street and all that business. As you can see we are here and I think the river from Biston Avenue is coming along here down Waverley Road and then I think it goes down Havant Road and then here, this is the ambiguous bit, but I'm pretty sure it comes through here and so the, uh, of course the river runs along here. Nice bit of uh, William Morris print here in the window of these opticians, of course William Morris lived in Walthamstow, grew up in Walthamstow. Wood Street is one of Walthamstow's oldest thoroughfares. It's recorded right back in the Middle Ages. It linked together Whips Cross and Chingford. The Chingford end, you had the kind of wooden shacks and temporary dwellings. The Whips Cross end is where the, the grander houses were, one or two of which are still in existence. Wood Street was also known for its film studios. There's some very early film studios here and they did some Shakespeare productions. The 
fantastic Wood Street covered market. It's a great place to go record shopping when it's open. So here on Waverley Road, that's the other side of that gap in the houses up there. Meaning that buried river could be running down this street here, crossing Wood Street here on a, on a low point in the road and flowing down Havant Road. It's the logical conclusion to draw. And then again, rivers have their own little world of logic that they follow. This is an interesting looking old church here, St Gabriel's Church. And we often find places of worship and public utilities along the course of buried rivers. At this point here, you can see Havant Road starts to rise towards Schoenhall Street, which is really running along a ridge, because on the other side it drops down again through Walthamstow Village and then down towards the River Lee, of which, of course, our river here is a, is a tributary. So I've made the assumption that it must flow along here. It must turn and flow along Turner Street. Oh, my God, Turner Street. I should emphasise that this section here is highly speculative. I have two maps which indicate the river running towards Leighton Stone, towards Whips Cross, parallel to Wood Street, rising on the high ground in one of them near the cricket ground. This bit here is just my speculation, but I think it's pretty solid. And you'll see in a minute, here's the thing, right? You're going along Turner Road, you've got the high ground of Schoenhall Street to our right here. Rivers can't run up hills, certainly run down them. So you get to the, the end of the street here, turn a road, see what happens. And once again, it's going uphill towards Schoenhall Street. So where's our river? In the night time when I was doing it, I doubled back on myself. And look what I found in the bend on the road. This alleyway here. So, does this little alleyway here follow the course of our buried river? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Look at this, it's leading us out into this new development here, just parallel to Wood Street. At this point, I'm pretty sure if we're not directly on the course of the river, we're very close of it. Because after my nighttime recce, I went home and I was very excited to find the following bit of text here. This is from the Victoria County History. And it says, West of Wood Street, flowing south to Leighton, was the water course which gives its name to Schoenhall, Filth Stream Street which it used to flood near Tinker's Bridge, Raglan Corner. In Leighton, it was called the Philip Brook. It now runs underground. Well, I'm sure you can imagine my reaction <laughs> when, I, when I first read that. It still sends tingles down my spine. There is a buried river here, a lost river of Walthamstow running here through this building site somewhere beneath the ground. I have looked a little bit on the plans here. Can't see any mention of a river, a brook or a stream. But it's here, running beneath the street, giving shape to the land, and giving it meaning, if you like, giving it purpose. You can build as many tower blocks as you like, but that river's gonna keep on running beneath the ground. Into this little street here, with the old chapel on one side. I'm looking at the uh, 1840 map, actually the chapel is marked on there. Pop an arrow in there and it has the, the stream, the Filly Brook, or the Walthamstow branch of the Filly Brook at least, 
running behind the chapel. So we've got that gap there between the blocks where the stream could be running and then it could be going through here. Something beautiful about this old chapel here, isn't there? Quite romantic in its own way. From here, I'd say it's pretty clear that it would run behind these industrial buildings here or through them, through Wood Street Autos, Thames Water. Come to answer my prayers. That would seem pretty clear to me. How many, uh, how many Thames Water vans have we seen today on the walk? It's got to be symbolic of something. They're following me. They know I'm onto the buried stream, the secret river. I'm trying to keep it a secret still. This is a beautiful display of neon at night time. So we're going to head back up along Wood Street and into Brook Road. Brook Road, eh? Mm, temper that excitement for just one second. We turn into Barrett Road. And this looks like a really good candidate for the course of the river coming through. This car park between the blocks of flats and over the road we have Brook Road and this kind of industrial type building here or educational building, now Wood Street Studios. And I would say our river is almost certainly running here along Brook Road. This is great isn't it? The Manual Instruction Centre. I suppose it still kind of is, it's Wood Street Studios now. I think it's an artist studios, I believe. Really beautiful building, isn't it? You gotta, you gotta picture the scene. I've come out at night time with just one little clue, a message on Instagram, nothing else, and the, and the memory of a slightly thwarted expedition 10 years previously. It's dark. I'm finding my way. All I've got is my senses to guide me and the reading of the land. I feel like I'm onto something. I come through that alleyway there at Turner Road. I come into that bit behind the new builds. I think I'm onto something here. I look at Wood Street Autos, another indicator. And then I look at my map. And I look at my map. I see that it lines up with Brook Road. You kind of need little hints, names, some sort of remnant to guide you. And often along a river, you will see some reference to the name of the stream or the presence of a stream, river road, brook road, river place, something like that. And here it was, brook road. And there's Brookfield as well over here. It was confirmation, it was such an exciting moment. I have to remember as well, at that point I didn't have any of the maps or any of the notes. When I went back to the notes, two things. Firstly, it does kind of confirm that brook road is on the course of the brook. The other thing it seems to confirm is that the name isn't a reference to the river at all. It would appear to be a reference to Lord Brook, who once held this manor, I think, in the uh, 18th and 19th century. And there's the Lord Brook public house up there in Shernhill Street. So it's just one of those interesting coincidences. <laughs> but at the time, it did help guide me along the way. And leave me right here, you can see at the end of Brook Road, another great indicator. At the end of Brook Road, you have this church here. See, another religious building on the course of a buried river. And this gap behind the church, I think, seems to perfectly line up with the course of the river. We're now looking along Shernhall Street, or Filth Stream Street, as I shall forever call it now. And we're looking down towards the low point. The river isn't actually running along Shernhall Street. But it's running behind this church here and cutting behind these houses. Just here off Shernhill Street, we have this alleyway which is perfectly aligned to bring us into the course of the stream. Along we go, look. So here we come. 
come out into Raglan Road. This is where things get a little bit curious. On this map here, that big bend is just down there. Bend in Chernhall Street. Tinker's Bridge, as it's recorded in the old archives. But it then seems to show the river essentially running up the street here before turning across Leebridge Road. Like I say, this quite a distinct uphill kind of contour here, so I don't think the river can be flowing uphill. I think it must be flowing across here somewhere. There's a few good candidates there. Carports are a good indicator. There's actually here this gap here beside the block of flats is also a really good candidate as well. So on the corner of Raglan Road and Schoenhill Street was known as Tinker's Bridge. Good indicator obviously, I mean a really bold indicator that the stream was here. And there's a handwritten note in the old borough archives that records an old inhabitant recalling that the waters of the stream would flood the cellars of the Lord Raglan public house over there and the beer barrels would be floating around in the cellar. What a great memory. I'm just going to walk up um, Raglan Road to see if I can see the point on the other side, on Leebridge Road, where it emerges. I suppose this is the other point where it could cross Raglan Road towards Leebridge Road. We'll just go around the other side and have a look. See there, that's the corner of Wood Street, the top of Leebridge Road, and the Whips Cross Roundabout, close to where we started our walk earlier on, and very close to uh, what, what is well recorded as being the principal source of the Philly Brook. And we're looking down Leebridge Road here into the sun. So coming from the high ground should make it easier to find uh, the point in which the river crosses the road. So at this stage, we know what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a branch of the Phillybrook, Leightonstone's Lost River, which is well recorded as rising on uh, Berryfield Farm. That's an intriguing name, isn't it? Berryfield Farm, indicating some sort of enclosure or fortification, later known as Whips Cross. And the source is there around the end of James Lane. That much we know, and I've done a full walk along the Phillybrook, and I will link to that below. I urge you to, at the end of this video, watch that one. And this river here, this humble little river working its way through the streets, is a tributary of the River Lee. It eventually ends up in the River Lee. It doesn't, I don't think it flows directly into it. I think it goes into the Lee via what was once the old Waterworks River, which uh, was diverted. But ultimately, this is part of the, of the river system of the Lee Valley. So what we're looking for here is the point at which the river crosses the road. So we're in the low point of the Leebridge Road here. And it's I'd say it's either running through those back gardens there, or more likely through that um, car showroom. Yeah, I think the, the, the stream seems to be crossing Leebridge Road around here. This is the low point in the land here. So that's where I would descend slightly from the map, because it's showing the river as running across a little bit higher up the slope there, and I don't know how that could be possible. We can see there's a clear path through from this uh, car showroom here all the way to Whips Cross Hospital. So we go along West End Avenue here, crossing into uh, E10, into Leighton, from Walthamstow, crossing the border, and heading towards Whips Cross Hospital. As we move towards Whips Cross Hospital here, the sense of excitement gets ever more tangible. It must be the uh, reverberations of our secret river, our buried river, permeating up through the tarmac, speaking to us down through the ages. This is the stuff. This is the stuff of dreams, really. This is what we live for, <laughs> this river hunting. And look, up ahead, such a clear indicator. Here we have such a beguiling and haunted, mysterious building. So here we have one of the old buildings of Whips Cross Hospital. It's now derelict. I think it's been derelict for a few years now. I think it was a nurse's quarters. And I'm pretty sure that the river runs behind this block here. It is slightly indicated on some of the later Ordnance Survey maps. 
and there are some ponds and wells indicated here so I'm pretty sure this is where it is and there's another key indicator here as well and this electricity substation is also a bit of a giveaway you see a few of these along the course of buried rivers they're always there it's cheap land you see cheap land to put some public utilities on there's one here and there's another one on the other side so we need to go around here into Peterborough Road and Peterborough Road here is mentioned in the 1994 newspaper article as one of the streets that have been affected by flooding and where they were relaying the culvert along Peterborough Road. This is the article from the uh, from the Guardian and Gazette in May the 12th, 1994, and it confirms the route going along uh, Wood Street and Brook Road, Schoenhall Street, then Whips Cross Hospital, Lytton Road, etc. And then also here there's a photograph a big pipe where the Philip Brook will flow, Thames Waters Pipe Works in Peterborough Road, Leighton. We got high land rising there up towards Essex Road, Leighton. So in the old in the old records in the vestry house, they do talk about the Philly Brook Valley. And the frequent flooding of the Phillybrook Valley was a real source of concern to the early local authority. They were always having to come up with schemes to, to deal with the flooding. One of the streets further on along the course in Leytonstone, Esther Road, was known as the Doomed Valley. <laughs> the Doomed Valley. I think there might have been a little bit of uh, exaggeration going on there, but it shows you how seriously they took the problem. Looking for Lost Rivers is a fantastic lockdown activity, no matter where you are in the world, somewhere. If you live in any kind of built environment, it's going to be water beneath the streets. It's great to go looking for it. Such a lot of fun. I love this. I really do. I think this is my favourite type of walk here, looking for the Lost Rivers. It's amazing. And there's more to come. Yeah, more to come. I'll tease that a little bit more a little bit later. And here we're looking back along James Lane to see the point at which our river crosses the road here. All the old records show the Phillybrook as rising on the high land at the end of James Lane on Berryfield Farm at Berryfield Cross or Whips Cross Farm. That's pretty well established and it is shown on a series of old maps which show the course of the Phillybrook. But this river is also apparent on the 1893 map of James Lane. And we can see here by my thumb, there's a footbridge. I think this here is our stream that we've been following. It does show it coming from a pond here, but I think, look, this watercourse here, or this here, I think these are watercourses and this footbridge, somewhere down here. And I think at this point here is where the two branches of the Phillybrook meet a sacred place, a confluence of rivers. So here's the continuation of that plot behind Whips Cross Hospital, where the river could be flowing. I think it's pretty clear here, the low point in the road. Let's see what we can find here. There's a lot of water just down here. Like I say, we have had a lot of rain recently. But there's an awful lot of water here lying in the road right near the point when the maps show this branch of the Phillybrook flowing down from Walthamstow. So we'll just cross the road and go down Clare Road, I think possibly named after the poet John Clare associated with Epping Forest. And let's see if we can find the point where uh, perhaps the two branches of the Phillybrook meet a magical sacred spot. I don't mind admitting, I've got a few tingles in my stomach right now. <laughs> I hadn't really thought of it in quite this way when I first tried to find the river, because I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure. Now I, I am sure. So the idea of trying to find the exact spot where the two branches merge is, I can't tell you, I've been thinking about this for over 10 years and to finally get 
some resolution is just incredible. Obviously, I know there's a few loose ends to still to be tied up, so get down in those comments. I think there'll be some really interesting contributions down there. But for now, I feel like we're possibly moving towards the confluence of the two branches of the Fillybrook of Leighton Stone's Lost River, the secret river of Walthamstow, this tributary of the River Lee. And here we are, we're in Forest Road here. So one source of the Fillybrook is coming down from the high ground there, up behind St Andrew's Church. The other one we know is flowing south from Walthamstow and it's crossing Forest Road somewhere here. I mean, if we read the land, it's where I'm stood now. And what do we have over the road? One of our key indicators, an electricity substation, a temple on the confluence of the rivers. You can see there the gap between those houses could be where the river is flowing. And then coming across here, to this glorious electricity substation. This is one of my favorite electricity substations in the whole of London. And could this point here mark the confluence between the two branches of the Fillybrook? So as we climb the hill here up towards St. Andrew's Church, Leytonstone, I've got a slight feeling of well, not quite elation, but really feel good about this walk today, about making this connection. We know the principal, what I'm going to call the principal branch of the Fillybrook, rises up here behind St Andrews. And I'll link for that walk below. It seems pretty clear that the other source that rises up there, above Wood Street, at Biston Avenue, and by the cricket ground, flows through the back streets of Walthamstow and meets the principal branch of the Philly Brook here in Forest Road. There should be some sort of other marker. Maybe we can put a plaque on the front of that substation. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Well, that is a really magical experience for me, doing that walk today and then the first time when I mapped out the other night. These are walks I will never forget. <laughs> it's a really, really special thing. What it has done now is obviously <laughs> considerably extended my Fillybrook walk, which I hope to see some of you on when we can finally gather in groups and go out for walks whenever that may be. I think that will probably, hopefully, be in the summer, right? So I'll have to do an extended Fillybrook walk and then the standard Fillybrook walk, which I'm partly walking along right now because it takes me home. Fillybrook leads me back to my front door so you can see why I've got such a special attachment to it. So thank you so much for coming on this really magical walk with me. You've been brilliant company, it's great to have you along. I mean I possibly wouldn't have done it without you. I'm gonna really enjoy editing this video. So thanks so much. Thanks also to my brilliant supporters on Patreon, the, the Radical Ramblers and the fellow travellers. And I think this is going to be the first in a series of at least two videos on the lost rivers of Walthamstow. So look out for the next episode, probably next week. So, as I like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Probably the course of a lost river in Walthamstow. Probably, not definitely, probably. So I'll see you then. Take care. Have a great week.